I recently got a 3D printer, which is a Soval SV01, and I really like it, but it's downstairs. I would like to be able to go upstairs and still be able to see how it's doing, what it's doing, its status, the temperatures, all that good happy stuff. In my quest for remote control, I didn't have to look too far. There's a really nice software package called Octoprint that allows you to monitor and control your 3D printer from a web browser running on any machine that's connected to the same network as your Octoprint server. My only issue was most people use Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi with a pre-made SD card called OctoPi, but I didn't want to tie up a Raspberry Pi just to do that. The Raspberry Pi I have is, hasn't been updated in a long time and I may do something with that in the future. I did know I have several old laptops and I wanted to use one of them as my Octoprint server. So, looking a little further, it's actually pretty easy to install Octoprint on any Linux-based server, especially any Debian-based Linux. So today, I'm going to show you how to install it on Linux Mint 20.3. And that way, you can take any old laptop you have and get it up and running in about 20 minutes. Maybe even less than that, actually, as long as you've already got Linux installed. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to install Octoprint in a virtual machine. And then we're actually going to go over to my actual Octoprint server. And I'll show you around a little bit and how to change some settings and where certain stuff is. And if you have a Soval SV01 like me, you'll be up and running with Octoprint real quick after I show you around. So let's jump on into the virtual machine and get started. Here we are in Linux Mint Mate, and you can see that it's 20.3 Una. And um, I actually did this with a slightly older version of Linux Mint on my actual laptop that has my 3D printer attached. This is actually a virtual machine, and I wanted to do it here so that you could see all the steps, and it's totally untainted from actually having the printer installed and working and eventually I'll flip back over to my actual machine with the 3D printer installed and do the capture showing you some things um, in there. The stuff I'm doing is not magic. Basically if you want to install it on Linux and not use a Raspberry Pi because I mean Raspbian is Linux right but if you want to just install it on an old laptop and not use a Raspberry Pi or Raspbian, that's perfectly fine to do. And on the forums, it shows you how to install um, on a Raspberry Pi manually to get Octoprint working. So we're going to just follow these steps, except we're going to be in regular Linux. And my actual 3D printer is running Octoprint off of an old laptop I have. So here's the directions that I'm going to use. So let's hit the terminal. And we're going to do most of this in sudo or super user do. And uh, you may or may not know what that does, but it basically gives whatever user you're logged in as root privileges. And it's a safety thing to go ahead and have it... Um, running everything in user mode normally. So anyway, um, it tells us to go ahead and copy. Or the first thing it tells you to do is check to see if you have Python 3. And this virtual machine is up to date. So we should have, yeah, Python 3.8.10. I think it requires 3.6. Next thing it's going to tell you is we're going to CD into uh, the user folder and I am logged in as Trav so that's my user so now we're in our user folder you can do PWD for print working directory home Trav so you know every user on Linux unless you configure it otherwise gets a um, folder in home for their stuff we're actually going to install Octoprint in this um, home folder for Trav so the first thing it wants you to do is update um, apt. 
So this will go out and grab the repositories. And notice I did the sudo. And so I'll just put in my password here to this VM. And it shouldn't find anything because I made sure this VM was totally up to date before I got started. Uh, nobody wants to sit there and watch stuff install. And when we do get to the point where we're installing things, uh, I will fast forward the video to make it a little easier. Let me, let me just put this uh, over on the side. Much better. And we'll move the terminal and snap it as well. So now we've got it side by side. Okay. Okay, now we're going to install a bunch of tools. So I'll triple click on this line to highlight it all. Right click and copy. And you can see that it's Python pip, which is the package manager for Python, Python dev, setup tools. And I'm not really a Python expert, so I just took their word for it. It even installs git because this installation method goes out to git to grab some things. So we'll hit enter and it says after this we're only going to, it says we need to get some archives here. So yeah, sure. We'll put in a Y, hit enter. And I'm actually not doing this at the house where my 3D printer is because my internet is satellite internet and it's terrible. So I'm, I'm in a place with some decent internet and that's another reason I'm using a VM. And we just sit here and watch some stuff install. There's nothing to do. So I'm just going to fast forward through this. Tools we needed installed. At least from the Linux side of things. Now we'll just make a directory for Octoprint. And then CD into that directory. So I'll just double click and copy. And remember, before I do that, I'll do PWD so that we know we're in home trav. Now if I was going to do this launching it manually and still wanted to be able to use the terminal for something else, you could do a space and put an ampersand here. But uh, we made this terminal strictly to install and launch Octoprint, so nothing to worry about. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to launch the server. And I think it's fully loaded. So now you just go into your browser. Okay, and since we're on the machine the server's running from, I'll just do localhost colon 5000 because that's the port that it's running on. And you can do some stuff to set it up to run strictly on port 80, but I have no interest in doing that. Even on my actual laptop with the 3d printer attached i just left it on 5000 in case i want to use port 80 for something else now we run through a little installation routine i'm going to widen this out a little bit we don't really need the terminal anymore so we'll do next and we have no backup to restore i'm going to set up some access control here and i recommend anybody does this even if you're not routing it out to the actual internet you need to go ahead and add a password and I wouldn't use the same password as what you used to sign into your Linux box but that's entirely up to you okay so I'll create the account and it's already gonna have me go ahead and log in with it actually that was Firefox want me to save it which is something I never do but this is a VM, so it'll be fine. So now we run through some connectivity checks, and this check interval will keep Octoprint from checking repeatedly if the network goes down, and uh, that may actually eat up some bandwidth if you're on some kind of limited internet. So 15 minutes sounded sane to me, so we'll test this host port. Um, for 1.1.1.1 and it's using 8.8.8.8 which is Google's DNS to go out and look and we'll also check octoprint.org so we know that our networking is working properly so I'll enable the connectivity check and that way it will do this 15 minute increment if 
the network goes down or something happens on the server and it won't overwhelm your machine or your network or your resources. Okay, I'm not going to let them track me. I didn't do this on my actual laptop and I'm not doing it in the VM, but that's entirely up to you. This blacklist, um, or this, this plug-in blacklist is pretty important. I don't have any plugins, but I'm getting further and further into 3D printing, so I'm assuming I will. And they have set up this uh, blacklist with some known bad plugins to keep them from being installed. So I turned that on. Now, this is the part where it depends on your printer. Okay. So I have a Soval SV1 or SV01. Okay. Um,. I'll just actually I'm just gonna rename it SV01 Soval for the model. Now the print bed and build volume, you gotta go look that up for your printer specifically. And the only printer I've used this with is my Soval SV01. So I have no idea if it's gonna work for your particular printer. You can look online. I can see that the Soval isn't actually officially on the list that's been tested and working. But I have a rectangular bed. The origin is lower left. The bed is heated. I do not have a heated chamber. And I gotta go look up the print volume for the Soval. So this is what you would do for your printer, okay? And I know this to be correct, okay? So this is my Y, front to back. This is my X, left to right. And this is my height, my Z. So Y, X, Z. And that's something I just kind of know because I've been messing with that printer for a bit. <clears throat> so my X, and I have a horrible memory, is going to be 240. Oops, caps locks not on, or num locks not on. Hmm. My Y is 280. Make sure of that. Yeah. And then my height is 300. Here we go. And I don't have any kind of custom bounding box. Go next. Okay, I don't have anything like this. Um, you know, you could send G code commands to it or send it to the server, I guess, or the machine that it's running on, but I don't have any of that. And I don't have the webcam working either. So I'm going to skip all that. That would be a, maybe whenever I get that working and care enough to fool with it, um, I'll do another video. But now I'll go next and it says all done. We'll just say finish. This is actually a good idea. It says never leave it running unattended because these things do catch fire occasionally. It's just nice, nice gesture. But um, we're going to go ahead and finish. And now you can see uh, anywhere on your network, you can uh, log in with the IP address of your machine. Uh, but anywhere on your network, you can put in that IP address, a colon, and 5,000. And you'll get to this. You'll have to log in with that user that you made in the first step. Now, when you see this again, I'll actually be on my laptop with the 3D printer installed. And I'll show you some things that I figured out in order to make sure it would connect and be working. All right. So now I'm back home where the 3D printer actually lives. And it's down in the basement. I'm up in the kitchen. I did go turn it on because you physically have to flip a switch on the Soval SV01. Even with Octoprint on, the switch has to be flipped on before the motors will do anything. You can still get information about the printer even if the printer is not flipped on, but you're not going to be able to control anything or print or whatever with Octoprint otherwise. So anyway, there's multiple ways that I can get to Octoprint. Uh, now, the machine that's running Octoprint is a laptop in the basement connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Is this machine so I can either get to it through the IP address 192.168.1.18 colon 5000 and you can see that this works just fine and I was already 
logged in that way but also out of the box it is configured to log in like this you can do octoprint dot local colon 5000 but from my experience with these types of things depending on your router and everything else in your home the IP address is probably the smartest thing to do and remember it'll be your internal IP address not um, not your external okay I'll go ahead and log out and log back in just to show you that it works my name is Trav here and let's see here we go so now you can see that um, my um, head is preheated already okay my hot end I don't want to update right now because like I said the place where the printer lives the internet is satellite and terrible but I went down and changed the filament to the color I wanted and you can see the last thing I printed was a Snoopy phone holder that I designed it came out okay but I don't know if it was the filament or just me getting used to how this printer handles certain things but anyway I know I'm gonna be printing soon so I'm gonna go ahead and heat the bed up and I know this bed heats up to 60 degrees by default so I'll just put in 60 and do that okay but let's start talking about the connection first okay and you can see here that uh, um, I can actually go disconnect okay so now I'm not connected and here's what I had to do normally it tries to start out on auto and it's probably for a specific printer or something uh, but auto didn't work for me at all so what you need to know is that most of the time your 3D printer is going to be on dev TTY USB 0 and that's its dev name in Linux the device name the baud rate is going to be 115,200 okay and I got that through trial and error and then later on I found it um, just in the controls somewhere on the Soval readout and see how it says offline as soon as I hit connect, it should be happy and say connecting. Okay, so now it says operational. The resend ratio, if that stays on zero, that's great. It means that you're communicating every which way that you need to with the printer. So now I'm going to go ahead and upload the thing I've been working on here. And I'm trying to make a little... Um, holder that a MagSafe puck will sit down in and I'm gonna use that for some mounts for the phone and the house and everything else so I've got it uploaded okay it's not gonna print it just yet but you can see all the stuff I've uploaded and tried out <clears throat> some of it's went better than others so now I need to uh, go ahead and preheat this bad boy okay I can't do it from over there you actually have to do it here but uh, we'll do 200 for the hot end and we'll do 60 for the bed because the Soval SV01 has a heated bed and you can see here on the the little readout that the temperatures will start going up 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 which is what you want to see and this is kind of cool because this is over time what it was doing when I was down there changing filament and all that good happy stuff and right here is where we just reconnected to it see so while we're waiting on it to heat I'm gonna show you that you can go to the little wrench up here the settings and all that stuff that we set up initially uh, you can come in here and change the printer profiles is somewhere where you might need to go change some things and when I first set this up I had the default set all wrong so I changed it to default sucks and and didn't delete it whatever the star is right here is the active printer that you have selected okay and then if you hit edit profile it's going to show you all that stuff that you set when we initially set this thing up so you can see the parameters here if you put these in wrong 
the print probably won't go well, but um, depending on where you're printing on the bed, it may actually work. But just make sure that you check this uh, if something's screwing up or the servo motors are making a lot of clicking or whatever. Like I said, for the Soval, the width is 240, the depth or Y is 280, and the height or Z is 360. So I know I'm good there. Okay, I'm just going to close. I don't even need to save. Okay, and everything's coming up to temp, and that's good. You can go ahead and print, and it'll go ahead and preheat and everything, but I like to manually preheat. So I just click on this MagSafe puck test that I uploaded. And the bed's close enough, so I'm going to say load and print. And then now it's going to go up here, and you'll see some estimates and all that. And I will tell you that these estimates do not seem very accurate, so your mileage may vary. I think it depends on the complexity of the print and all kinds of other things. So, uh, yeah. That is how you can set up a Solval SV01 on an old Linux laptop with Octoprint, and you don't need a Raspberry Pi. If this was helpful to you guys, I'd appreciate a like or subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them uh, down below, and if it's something constructive, I usually will respond. I'll give you a thumbs up, a comment back. And uh, I'm kind of new to all this, so for all I know, uh, this is not the best way to do things, and that's how I learn. So, all right, guys, thanks, and have a great day.